Yeah, that's like, when you're going to see whatever money. you decide now. Allocate. Whatever you allocate now is going to be. Whatever you allocate, because the vote won't happen. The only reason why we're starting now is because I just see this in the process. If I just go to you and say, okay, now vote, that wouldn't be democratic at all. Because I'm not giving you an opportunity to be a part of the board decision of this process. So there'll be meeting between so, 14 so and 15. It'll, it'll be, we'll, we'll be meeting between now and when the vote actually happens. April 2015 is when the voting it takes about a year and a half to two years for these projects to get in. So the bottom line, the question is, in the 15-16 budget, yes. when the money is going to be yes. out there. Thank you. Um, district committee members may simultaneously uh, serve as a budget delegate, committees, or committee facilities. Um, you can still participate as a regular participant. Um, so if you're interested in this, please fill it out or hold on to it, fill it out, give us a call later, mail it to us, email it to me, whatever it is, and um, we'll go from there. Oh, well, it, give me one quick second. Oh, you're going to have all the time you want. There we go. So, um, the next thing we're going to do is, uh, if you have anybody else who you think would want to be a part of one of these information sessions, uh, we have sessions on, I think most of you have the flyers, I think I have some over here. We have tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, throughout our district, we have different sessions. So, so we, the next, tomorrow's at the Kingsbridge Library. On Wednesday, we'll be at the Webster PAL on 183rd Webster. No, you do not have to. This is if you wanted to invite someone to come out. And then Thursday, we'll be at the Belmont Library. Um, we will contact you, so if you decide to be a district committee member, you will be contacted in about one to two weeks, and we'll start meeting you. And then we'll be planning a neighborhood assembly. That is, the neighborhood assembly is what in late August to the early September. And that's where everyone here can come up to the neighborhood assembly. So that's where you're going to be able to tell me your ideas and we'll compare that with the neighborhood assembly. Um, we're going to set up an email list. So if you have an email, please make sure your email's on there. Uh, we're going to try to mail it as much as we can, but mailing can get expensive, so if you have emails, we can put it in. If you have a phone number, put it in. We'll call you. We'll try to keep the rest of the as possible. Um, uh, now we're going to move to the question and answer session. Um, does anybody want to come help with this?
So we can make that available to you. That's not a, that's not a problem. Most of the information is basically stored on pvnyc.org. If you don't have access to a computer or internet, uh, then we can definitely give you a few pages, and we can just the office can print stuff out and bring it. That's not a problem. Or you can go to the office. Yes. Okay. What's your name? Jackie. 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 Nice Jackie. 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 Um, I have a project that I want in your area, but I don't kind of live in your district, even though I'm actually two That's blocks fine. from where your district is. That's okay. So one of the things is to participate in different levels of participation. No, but Richie, Richie does have to talk. Um, yeah, he has Bronx Park, and yeah. I live two blocks from the park, yes. and the project that I want is in, I want it to so, be in the park. So you can, what you can do is you can be, Bring the idea to the neighborhood assembly. You can become a budget delegate if you decide and really work on that committee to push it. You do not have to live in the district to, to be part of the process. But I can't only, vote on it. Well, you would not be able to vote on it. But what you can do is go to Bronx Park and do outreach and get people to vote for it when, when it's time to, to do that process. What time does meeting take place? It varies. Usually we're going to try to do meetings um, as late as possible. Uh, and, and depending on what feedback we get from you guys, if you tell us in certain areas that we need to do it earlier, we'll do it earlier. If we need to do it later, we'll do it later. Why? What, what's best for you? I, I just got here, that's why. All right. I, sometime I work until 8, sometime until 7. It's... We'll, try, we'll try to accommodate very soon. Hi, Jason. Uh, so a million dollars is allocated, and I'm seeing here every budget is proposed. What happens if money is left over or it goes slightly over the million dollars? So uh, many council members have actually uh, allocated more than one million, and based on participation, the council member and the district committee uh, and the steering committee can make a decision to allocate more money. Right. Uh, a great example is Muslim Mark Burrito allocated uh, 1.8 million dollars last time. Right. So, uh, and there's also districts that have unique circumstances where they're divided by uh, body of water, like the South Bronx, but right now you don't really have that. So there would be, it would really, at, at this particular point, you would plan for a million. And if you're on the district committee, you would think with that. Uh, but if, if participation goes way over, we have seen council members say, you know what, the six or seven project should get funded. Um, that speaks to another something else that wasn't mentioned earlier, the top five projects uh, get funded. Right? So if you have some that exceed a million, so it goes into, the addition goes to like three. Right, for this thousand. example, there's a yeah. 680 exactly. thousand dollar project exactly. that, that sucks us more than half. Exactly. It's right. more of one point fifty. Exactly. So you get stuck in a tight situation where the, the second, third, and fourth, and fifth top vote getters uh, should also get a look. Right? So you're saying say top, top five? It's top five, but the council member has the ultimate discretion in saying, you know what, I've allocated one million, one million, one million we're going over, I, I should do more. Because the promise I made. Okay. So basically, you start out and say, okay, I've got a million dollars to play with. But it's like it's not a hard set in stone number. It's, like it's, it's, it's your, that's your that's your starting point. That's, exactly. You don't look to go too much from that, but it's like well, it's and not it's not yeah. a deal breaker. You don't say one point two. That's right. Or 1 .3. That's right. And it's very important. So the question: Did everyone in the back hear it? <coughs> no. Okay. Okay. That's, that's why I asked. <laughs> I have rabbit ears. Yeah. Uh, so. I, so the question was, uh, it's not a hard and fast rule about the one million. And the answer is that, yes, that is mostly correct. There are two controlling bodies of people that are going to weigh in on that decision post-vote. That's going to be the district committee, right? All, any, anyone in this room who decides to volunteer to be a part of that group. And the council members staff. They're going to sit after the vote count gets, gets issued. And then you're going to see what you have, and then the conversation will take place at that point. Again, to revisit. What's your name? Diana. Diana. Nice to meet you. Uh, the streets that are on the edge of the district, like the Grand Park Street, does the district include all of the Grand Park or just one side of it? 
the east side. Only the eastern portion of the grounds. So that's true for all the border? All the grounds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then in terms of the number of Just, uh, I, I came a little late, sorry about that. Um, but I, I'm just wondering, where is the money coming from? I don't know if anybody asked that. But yeah, that yeah, was in the PowerPoint. It was, oh, okay. Um, it's a council member's discretionary funding. From it's where, though? It's the, it's the allocation that the speaker makes from the New York City budget. Okay. Each council member, it's discretionary right, So funding. the city gets a lump sum from That's the right. state. Right. They divide it among the council members. From the city, sort funded, of. From the city taxpayer. Right, okay. So we're talking about taxpayer money that you pay as mm -hmm. a New York City resident. Okay. Um, if you have an idea, are you responsible for submitting a proposal, or is that something that the district committee can do? Right, great question. So the question was you have to champion your project all the way to the end, right? So, so you offer your project. To the, to the council district, to the um, council staff, and at, during the neighborhood assemblies, which is during the fall. So you offer the idea, that can be your contribution. You don't have to be a budget delegate. The next, you don't have to write a proposal, you don't have to do anything bad together than tell, tell the committee, I want that done. And then the people who want to take this on a step further into the winter, 
they're, they deem themselves budget delegates. They just sign a piece of paper to say, I want to volunteer more time. They then meet in committees by, by, uh, by subject. So if you have a sample ballot in front of you, this is a great way to think of it. Say you just want to give an idea, you want nothing to do with the whole sorting. Then you're out, right? You just walk away and you go to the meeting. You had a great time. Hopefully, more, li more than likely, you'll vote in the end. But during the middle process, folks are going to meet in these categories to vet the ideas. Think of it like 30,000 ideas turn into three, turn, turn into 30 proposals that end up on the ballot for something mm. like this. Imagine 30 different proposals on this ballot, which we've seen. This is an example with a smaller amount, uh, but you get the idea. It goes from big, a big amount to a smaller amount.
Council Member Andy Cohen, I believe we share um, we share Bedford Park. Share what? Park. So, so parks of parks of Southern Boulevard. Um, he he has parts of parts that border with Botanical Gardens. Um, uh, but sadly, but sadly, we do not have more contiguous um, uh, involvement. Any other questions? Bill? Please, everyone. Yeah, just uh, in the back so we can just have uh, yep. ground rule and one mic. Um, so each thing is done by the district, but is there any attempt or um, are the different districts given some leeway on how they handle things? I'm just wondering about. Um, the different neighborhoods that we um, somehow break up District 15, however many neighborhoods, so that we're trying to evenly distribute the representation on yeah. these things and also possibly the representation of how the funds are spent. Right. Also, I heard the top five, it's five? Yes. Top five budgets? Right. Um, and five where the, those five projects would be um, dividing a, a pot of, uh, of, of approximately a million dollars. Right. So, is it more practical? I mean, um, Christopher, I know you've worked on other uh, PV cycles, and I observed what happened with uh, now Speaker Melissa's District 8 cycle last year. Uh, is it practical or suggestion or done? that if it's five, we take the pot, split it by five, and say the project's got to be one-fifth of the right. pot, yeah. or have you found that um, maybe a project won and it wasn't so expensive, and then maybe another project won in the same district, and it costs more? Yeah, this is something that, um, well, first of all, thank you for your question. Is everybody clear on what it is? Okay. So, it was a three-part um, question. So the, the question really, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Bill, but the, the question relates to how do we make sure that the, it's a question about equity, right? where, yeah. the, where the projects fall throughout the neighborhood. So he, he's asking, okay, you get top five vote getters are all in three neighborhoods out of ten. Right? So how do you prevent that, and what, do you, what can you do in participatory budgeting to ensure a, a representation of funding throughout the district, right? Not just in one place. There are a few things. Um, one, one thing that a council member did, uh, did last cycle was he said, I want, because he knew initially that his district was very divided. This was in David Greenfield's district. So he had Hasidic Jewish uh, community in one end, Korean community in another, and then um, African American and Caribbean in another, right? So what he said was, I'm going to have 500,000 over here and 500,000 over here, right? And the initial planning before the ballot even came to fruition. So that's something he, he decided to do, um, you know, it's just policy making within his district to say, I want to do it this way. And that communication with the district committee allowed that to happen, right? It's not just the council member decides. The great thing about this process is that community members are invited up front to say, I want to be involved in the rulemaking process. I want to see this come through to make, make sure that uh, funds get distributed in the right way. The other thing that you can do is um, a very important tool in the budget delegate process it's called the needs matrix. And the participatory budgeting project uh, created this tool for community members to numerically decide under, to evaluate each project before it even ends up on the ballot. So right now you have this, I keep going back to this, it's a great example, and I love the visual makers. So there are, nine there are nine projects on here. 
There are several projects on that, that didn't make the ballot because they weren't in high need communities. They were not. They were not in high need communities. So that, that is an arbitrary judgment. That's part of the budget delegate's job to go out and site visit a location to say, you know what, somebody offered this playground idea, but this playground looks really good. It doesn't need a, it doesn't need a PV project. And then, and then they go to another site and say, you know what, this playground has cracks in the ground and uh, the equipment's falling down. Actually, this is a good idea. We should, I'm gonna score this a nine out of 10 in need. And then they take those highest scores and move that through the budget delegate process uh, and work with the council office and the city agency. So it's, it's a complicated job, but it's really worth it to go and check out what, what has the highest need. And uh, we'll get somebody else and I'll come back to you. So quick question, just to pick an echo, because I have to use the playground as an example. Yeah. We um, picked up the Wittery Hall Franks playground, but you were told we should use the Facebook. So it's got proof of the ground. Right. Well, and, yeah, I, it's great, and, and I and I I hope to see it. But I encourage we you to. Walk down after this <laughs> we could we could we, walk down. But what I'm going to say is, I really want you to continue to participate, come to a neighborhood assembly, offer the idea, mm -hmm. and I'd also encourage you to be a budget delegate that you know about your committee, right? And your voice on that committee is really important. <laughs> another another question. But uh, ideas will come in the neighborhood assembly. This is mostly about the process and how to get. I take my kids to the park here often, so I can do I appreciate it. So, yeah, so definitely. definitely. So, everyone who signed in, we, we will invite you out to the neighborhood assembly where the idea of the brainstorming.